So the main objectives for today are to uh, go over what peripheral arterial disease is. I will more than likely use the acronym PAD uh, for peripheral arterial disease. Uh, what are some of the risk factors? What are the symptoms you may be experiencing? How do we diagnose peripheral arterial disease? What are some of the treatment options that are available? We will have a brief case at the end. And then uh, what are your follow-up options and then questions? So what is PAD? Uh, essentially it's a narrowing of the arteries um, and pretty much any of the arteries that are away from the heart, uh, mainly in the outer regions of the body, uh, such as the legs, the stomach, your arms and your head. This commonly affects the arteries in the legs. Um, both PAD and coronary disease are caused by atherosclerosis, um, which is a blockage of the arteries in critical regions of the body. We'll go over that in a little more detail shortly. So some quick facts about PAD. Uh, the most common symptoms tend to involve the legs. Uh, you may experience cramping, pain. You may feel a, a general tiredness in your legs. Um, it may involve the, the leg or the hip area. And often you develop these symptoms when you're walking or climbing stairs. They tend to resolve when you rest or stop whatever activity you are doing. And with continued activity, the symptoms return. These are often mistaken for something else. Uh, and thus are often, uh, PAD is often undiagnosed. Um, as a note, uh, if you have peripheral arterial disease, uh, you are at higher risk for coronary disease, heart attacks, and strokes. And with that being said, if left untreated, uh, leg artery disease can lead to gangrene and potential uh, loss of the limb by way of amputation. The bad news uh, is that your risk of peripheral arterial disease or PAD increases uh, with age. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about aging, um, but high blood pressure and high cholesterol are also risk factors which are easily managed. Uh, smoking is one of the most significant risk factors for PAD uh, and in, is very easily treated by stopping smoking. Uh, diabetes is also a pretty significant risk factor. And we'll go over that uh, in a little more detail shortly. Some good news, though, is that PAD is easily diagnosed. Uh, it is often controlled um, by following your physician's recommendations and leading a heart-healthy lifestyle. So you are often in charge of, of controlling your symptoms. Um, and some cases can be treated without intervention or invasive therapies, uh, mainly that's by way of lifestyle changes and medications. So the tie between atherosclerosis and peripheral arterial disease is mainly it's a plaque buildup in your artery walls. And this plaque is a deposit of fat, cholesterol, and other harmful substances. Uh, and if it gets built up enough, it can often choke off or reduce the blood flow to that portion of the body. Uh, this then can become inflamed or angry uh, and sometimes may rupture, which leads to a blood clot that may completely block that artery. If that happens, you will often develop uh, pain, uh, significant color changes uh, in the affected limb. I don't know what- You will have difficulty doing. walking. You may develop sores and ulcers that do not heal. If that blockage becomes 100% or total and left untreated, may often lead to gangrene or a loss of that limb by way of amputation. Um, if this complete blockage occurs in one of the neck arteries or your carotid artery, it often leads to a stroke. So why is this important? Why are we talking about this today? PAD is dangerous because it may slow blood flow to the limbs, your organs, and your brain. And obviously without enough blood flow, those target areas may suffer damage. Uh, and without certain treatment and specific treatment, these areas may get infected or die. And as mentioned before, may lead to amputation um, and or death. And thus PAD is potentially life threatening, but with proper prevention, proper care and proper diagnosis can often be reversed. So how is this connected to the heart? Um, they sort of go both ways. If you have coronary disease, you are at higher risk for peripheral arterial disease and vice versa. If you have leg artery disease or neck artery disease, you are at increased risk for coronary disease. 
they share several overlapping risk factors, mainly smoking, which is the highest risk factor, um, age, as we've talked about, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, being overweight or obese, being physically inactive or having diabetes, uh, all increase your risk for both. But you can control your risk. If you smoke, I urge you to stop. That is the one of the number one risk factors for peripheral arterial disease. And you're at four times the risk of having a blockage in an artery um, outside of the heart versus those that do not smoke. Uh, if you have diabetes, the best way to control things is to have your blood sugars controlled, um, diet, exercise, and medications, uh, and mainly uh, the goal is to your A1C level less than 7%. If you have high blood pressure, uh, again, medications, lifestyle changes. Uh, the problem with high blood pressure is it often has no symptoms and thus is called the silent killer. Uh, high cholesterol is essential to preventing uh, progression of, of leg artery disease, peripheral arterial disease, as well as controlling it if and when it's diagnosed. Obesity, being overweight, specifically uh, having a BMI greater than 25 increases your risk, and the higher your BMI is, the higher you are at risk, the more you are at risk. And obviously there are many ways to reduce weight. Physical inactivity is a risk factor as well, but easily controlled by simply getting out and moving. Some of that is weather dependent, I understand, but gyms are open and getting moving in general helps. There are, all, there are also supervised exercise programs through physical therapy that are often part of the treatment for both peripheral arterial disease and coronary artery disease. Yeah. We work out of process. I mean, might not be to that. So this is a pictorial that, that just sort of groups everything we've already talked about. So peripheral arterial disease affects about eight and a half million Americans over the age of 40. Those who are most at risk, African Americans, are three times more likely to uh, have a positive screen for peripheral arterial disease as opposed to their non-Hispanic uh, white counterparts. Those with diabetes and those that smoke, as mentioned, are four times higher risk for developing peripheral arterial disease than those that do not smoke. So what are some of the symptoms you may be experiencing? Uh, as a uh, manifestation of peripheral arterial disease, muscle cramping, namely in your hips, thighs, and calves. This tends to come on with exertion, such as walking, stairs, or exercising, and tends, tends to go away with rest. And with continued activity, these symptoms return. Some patients have no symptoms at all. Yeah. You may often get leg pain that simply just does not go away. You may get ulcers or wounds that do not heal. The temperature changes in your legs and feet may feel colder. You may have poor nail growth or discolored nails, a yellowing of the nails. Specifically in men with diabetes, erectile dysfunction may be the initial manifestation of peripheral arterial disease. Some may dismiss these symptoms as just a part of normal aging and blame it on arthritis, sciatica, uh, nerve pain, and just general stiffness. And often diabetics may confuse this with neuropathy or a, a numbness in their legs and feet. How do we diagnose peripheral arterial disease? It clearly begins with A, talking to your physician, but a, a good physical exam by your physician. The best thing you can do if you are concerned or you have any of these risk factors is when you see your doctor to take off your shoes and your socks. Uh, we will discuss symptoms with you, uh, and then your physician should do pulse checks, to check your pulse in several areas, namely in the groin on both sides. Behind Everybody mute, the knees, please. Everybody mute, please. In both of your feet, your arms, and in your neck. So once there is a concern for peripheral arterial disease, there are some testing options that your physician may order. The first one is often called the ankle, ankle brachial index or ABI. This is a very simple test. It's inexpensive and only takes a couple of minutes and compares the blood pressure in your feet to that in your arms, which determines how well your blood is flowing to your feet. Uh, and if this is abnormal, often leads to more testing.
such as an ultrasound or Doppler, often called a duplex, um, which uses sound waves to look at the arteries in your legs. It is non-invasive. It does not take very long, um, but accurately measures blood flow in your arteries and may indicate the presence of a blockage by the waveform. Next would be a, a computed tomographic angiography or CAT scan or CTA, also non-invasive, um, but this will show all of the arteries from your abdomen all the way down to your feet. And we'll be able to pick up blockages as you can see here depicted by the um, arrows in the picture on the right. And the lastly would be a, an MRI or MRA, a magnetic resonance angiography, which is not often used. Um, again, though, is non-invasive. It's similar to a CAT scan, except for the fact that there is no radiation with an MRA. And lastly is angiography, which is invasive. This is done typically in a hospital. It's very similar to a heart catheterization, if any of you have had that done before. It's when dye contrast is injected into your arteries and we use x-ray to actually show the arteries have them light up and we are able to figure out where the blockages are. The best part about angiography is not only is it diagnostic, but it is therapeutic that you are able to find the blockage and potentially be able to fix it at the same time. So once it is diagnosed, um, there are several treatment options for peripheral arterial disease. Um, we'll start with those that are non-invasive and conservative, such as lifestyle changes, diet, exercise, control of weight, control of blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol. If you smoke, stopping smoking. There are some medications that may be prescribed to help the blood flow. Physical therapy is often utilized as sort of a structured walking program to help improve blood flow and thus symptoms. There are invasive therapies, which would be next, uh, and that would utilize uh, things such as balloons and stents. And then lastly would be a surgical option with one of the vascular surgeons, uh, which may often lead to bypass surgery or amputation if symptoms are severe enough. And obviously, it is best to discuss which option is best for you with your physician. So now we'll go over a case of Ruby D. She's a 74-year-old white female who had complaints of pain in her calf, specifically in the back of her calf, when she was walking more than 50 feet. When she stopped walking, this began to affect her daily life. She noticed when she was walking around the grocery store, she couldn't do that anymore uh, without having pain. So she had succumbed to using a scooter in most stores. Her past medical history includes high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol. She has coronary disease and had heart stents placed four years ago. And she used to smoke. She did quit smoking in 2019. Her medications, which are very common, lisinopril and hydrochlorothiazide for blood pressure, metformin is used for diabetes, atorvastatin, which is a cholesterol pill. She's also on aspirin and Plavix because of her heart stents. She's married, she has two kids, and she used to work in an office. So she saw her primary care doctor with these complaints, um, and rightfully so, uh, referred to me. In the office, her blood pressure was 152 over 87, which is elevated, and her heart rate was 74. On exam, she had a, a decrease in pulses, namely in her left foot and behind her left knee. And as we discussed, which is often the first step, an ABI was ordered, which was abnormal in the left leg. After discussing uh, many options with her, given the functional limitations in her daily life, it was felt best to proceed with an invasive test. So we scheduled the angiography. And so this is a, a picture of the artery in her left leg. The black areas are the contrast or the dye that is used to light up her leg arteries. 
And with the red circle, you can see that the black dye doesn't make it from top to bottom. And so she has a pretty significant blockage in that leg artery. So next it was decided to use uh, some special equipment called atherectomy, uh, which is like a rotor rooter to try and get rid of some of the plaque and the calcium. And this is what the artery looked like after that. And next, several balloons that have a drug coating on them were used to uh, get this result, which I was very happy with. As follow-up, the pain in her leg was gone. She's able to walk around the grocery store and around her neighborhood without pain. The pulses in her legs returned to normal and she was obviously very happy. And she was referred back to her primary care doctor for better blood pressure and diabetes control. And that's the end of the presentation. I appreciate your attention and I will take any questions you have. Uh, so I have two questions. One is, does PAD impact the abdominal area? It can, yes. Uh, this would often be manifest, uh, manifested by abdominal pain, namely after eating, but you do have arteries that supply uh, your stomach and your gut that can have uh, the same buildup of plaque as other areas. Uh, second question was, can leg and feet cramps at night be a symptom? Absolutely. Um, if that is a concern, it should be brought up with your physician. Uh, but yes, cramps in the, in the legs and the feet at night could be a symptom of a blockage in a leg artery. Uh, this was another question, um, an LED in November. I, I'm assuming that is a, a, you had a stent to your LED, your artery in your heart, uh, and you're feeling arthritic pain. Uh, it could be a concern uh, for peripheral arterial disease. It, it's something worth talking with your primary care doctor about. Um, and if appropriate, um, uh, looking to doing some testing to make sure you don't have blockages in your leg arteries. Um. So one of the questions was, which doctors with VCS treat PAD? Um, so at, at several of our offices, we have uh, physicians who specialize in the treatment of PAD. Uh, I'm in Mechanicsville. Um, so there are two of us here in this office, myself and Dr. Patel. In the West End uh, of Richmond, we have Dr. Appleton, Dr. Kumar um, will treat leg artery disease as well as Dr. Rajab. Uh, and south side, um, south of the river, we have uh, Dr. Melcher, Dr. Shaw, and Dr. Newton. Um, yes, injectable, uh, the question was um, the injectable drugs for high cholesterol, will that help? Uh, that will obviously help your cholesterol levels, um, which uh, in turn will hopefully uh, help any peripheral arterial disease that you have or, or at least stabilize what you have. Is numbness associated with PAD? Yes, it can be. Uh, numbness can be a manifestation of several things, but uh, peripheral arterial disease uh, can uh, present with numbness. Um, yes, all of the physicians uh, at VCS can help coordinate uh, with other doctors who have certain specialties um, and get any of you in to see anyone with a certain specialty. Is it normal to have leg pain just when climbing stairs or walking up a steep incline? No, it is not. Um, that should definitely be talked about with your physician uh, and, and worked up appropriately, but that those symptoms are concerning. 
Um, does PAD affect the right leg? It can affect uh, the right leg by itself. It can affect both legs. Uh, it can affect the arms. Um, but yes, it can, it can affect either leg or both. Uh, yes, all of our offices are, are capable of conducting uh, any of these tests, obviously, with the exception of the invasive uh, testing. Those are, are done in an outpatient hospital setting. How can plaque formation diminish over time? Um, a lot of that uh, is with uh, medications and lifestyle changes, uh, diet, exercise, controlling blood pressure, controlling diabetes, controlling cholesterol. Um, medications help with that. Um, and if, if plaque is uh, formed enough to cause symptoms, um, getting it taken care of um, uh, will help diminish symptoms, but also then you will more than likely be relegated to, to medicines to help prevent um, progression of the plaque that you have. Uh, yes, uh, PAD can affect uh, your hands and your fingers. Um, not as common, but it can. Um, both sides or one side versus the other. Does anyone else have any more questions? Uh, one more question. Veganism is a uh, diet that you're in now. Is there any one diet that is favorable over others? I think the one that's been studied the most uh, and has the most data behind it is the Mediterranean diet. And that overall helps weight loss, blood pressure, cholesterol. One more question. I had a heart attack and a quadruple bypass 12 years ago. I'm on many drugs for heart and blood pressure, diabetes, and have developed PAD. Uh, what's next? Uh, next would be coordinating with your primary care doctor a referral to someone who specializes in peripheral arterial disease, um, seeing what your symptoms are, seeing what testing you've had, uh, what testing needs to be done, and, and work on, on getting your symptoms treated. Is there someone in your office that can help with all the meds I'm um, on? Cancer med and cholesterol med to make sure one med is not contributing to other disease. Uh, that is something I would uh, start talking with your primary care doctor about, but if, if you felt, uh, or your, uh, cardi uh, your primary care doctor felt that you needed to speak with a cardiologist, yes, any of us are happy to help. What is more prominent evidence of peripheral arterial disease is the next question. Uh, that varies person to person. Uh, everyone has different symptoms. Uh, we went through some of the symptoms to begin with, um, but they're, they're quite varied, um, even up to having no symptoms. Um, so if you have uh, some concerning symptoms, I would talk with your uh, physician about those symptoms. All right, well, I think that is it. I appreciate your attention. And we will send the slides out via email uh, and any questions, please call. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.